just outside the village of Roslyn near the Scottish capital of Edinburgh, and set among picturesque rolling hills and woodlands of Lothian, is the world-famous Collegiate Chapel of St. Matthew, more commonly known to most people as the Roslyn Chapel. This mysterious 15th century edifice began life as a Catholic church having been founded by Earl William Sinclair. The primary purpose of the chapel was to hold mass for the dead of the Sinclair family members, all of whom were originally Norman in origin and not of Scottish heritage. Most of these masses held in Roslyn Chapel venerated the departed souls of ancestors of the Sinclair family with constant choral singing along with plenary indulgences on behalf of the dead Sinclairs. What makes this particularly interesting is that such religious ceremonies are often designed to cleanse a specific ancestor or even an entire family line of a wicked past or appalling deed in the hopes of elevating the ancestor's soul out of hell and purgatory depending on the specific nature of their sins and to get them into heaven in other words to undo a family curse so the sins of the forefathers are not visited upon the sons and future grandsons. This then begs the question, what level of monumental past evil or immense spiritual transgression did the Sinclair family or one of their ancestors indulge in that something so remarkable as Roslyn Chapel was needed and constantly used in order to undo? This report will attempt to question and also to explain why this modest but remarkably ornate structure leaves the visitor with such a sense of being drained of their very life force when visiting the location, especially when one descends into the literal hell mouth of the crypt. In this sense, the chapel and Roslyn, along with all the esoteric symbolism and occultic conventions contained within its very structure, can be seen as something that is not so much attempting to make a bargain with God, but rather, metaphorically maybe, making a deal with the devil. For only the devil can open the gates of hell, so a soul might move on to heaven. To this day, despite the Reformation and the social and religious turmoil of the centuries since the building of the church, Roslyn Chapel is still under the ownership of the Sinclair family. Any attempts to place the church in public ownership have always been rejected. The Sinclairs clearly are firmly grasping onto their multi-century and multi-generational stake in this building and are showing no signs of letting this go. Before the construction of the chapel began, the commencement took place sometime between 1446 and 1456. Earl William Sinclair made sure to provide a comfortable house for the skilled craftsmen he assigned to this project as he wanted the very best stonemasons and artists available. Some have even speculated that the lodging house built for the workers became the first official Freemasonic lodge and would demonstrate to the workers that this was no ordinary ecclesiastical project The original plans were for the church to be a large cruciform structure. However, only the choir was constructed, onto which a small functional altar was incorporated. Within a church or cathedral, the choir or choir is always situated on the western side and represents a symbolic land of the dead. Perhaps Earl William Sinclair never had an intention of constructing a full church and only stated this in the plans so as to appease the Vatican in order to gain full consecration of the building. As if Roslyn Chapel itself 
was to be more akin to a temple, not to the throne of St. Peter in Rome, but was built secretly for a very different God in mind. The Sinclairs were originally one of the families connected to the Knights Templar, who liberated the Holy Land from Muslim control and also plundered many artifacts from the crypts in and around the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. This not only included sacred objects but spiritual and magical texts, which appear to have given the Templars and by extension the Sinclair family astounding wealth upon their return from the Holy Land. When the French king and the papacy joined forces to exterminate and outlaw the Knights Templar, many fled to Scotland and presumably took their treasures with them. Now this begs the question, did the Sinclairs take an object or an entity, perhaps even a powerful djinn or dibbuk with them, from the Holy Land to Roslyn? And is this entity sequestered below the altar of the chapel itself? When one enters the crypt, which runs adjacent and around the subfloor of the altar, but not directly underneath it, those people of a sensitive nature find themselves feeling a sense of monumental dread and extreme evil behind a wall separating them from the subterranean level of the sealed off altar sub-basement. The walls within the crypt next to this are covered in pentagrams and other magical symbols scratched into the surface of the stone. Clearly this wall is akin to something like the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem for some, and in this case contains something beyond the stone masonry and mortar and is holding back a colossal psychic and spiritual power of some kind. Having visited a location myself in 2012 and in 2021, I am convinced that Roslyn Chapel is the world's largest and most ornate dibbuk box, to use that analogy. If not this, then perhaps one of the jinn that Solomon was said to have used to have constructed the temple in Jerusalem is held prisoner there. Whatever it is, it is not human and it is very powerful. Some have even speculated that even Jehovah itself is entombed below the altar. That the Sinclairs are literally holding the God of the Old Testament hostage. Regardless of the nature of the being itself, there is a super entity no doubt held within the inaccessible lower reaches of Roslyn Chapel below the altar, and its power appears to be fed by the popularity of the location in recent times. I noticed a distinct increase in the psychic attenuation, focus and saturation of the charge within my own consciousness in the decade or so between visits. It is also worth noting that one time, not too far from the chapel itself, one of the largest munitions factories which ever existed once stood, creating millions of rounds of ammunition to be used in the wars of Europe. Sacrifices for Jehovah? One can only speculate. Another issue is that people are not being warned of the possible effects of visiting the chapel might have upon them. They are drawn by either having watched a movie The Da Vinci Code or come to marvel at the incredible workmanship used to construct and decorate the chapel once they have passed through the sterile and seemingly harmless coffee shop and gift store. And from this they wander into the crypt unprepared for the energy and soul harvesting saturated walls. An intense malignant atmosphere around them until that is they want to suddenly leave for reasons they can't explain but by then 
whatever entity is sequestered below the altar of Roslyn Chapel has already had its fill. <laughs>